Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for, for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you may get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of uh, prophecy, or any supernatural experience you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints that's watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right? That's uh. Let's try to recap where we were last week. You know what I'm saying? So last week we dealt with uh we dealt with the aftermath of our people getting sent out. Remember the Babylonians came, they invaded our place, they set our stuff on fire, they kicked us out of the land. What in the world is going on with this crazy? That's what I'm talking about. Is the crisis? All right. Actually though, it looked good. It looked good. Let me kiss. Oh, Ari, you here? Oh, my babies is here. Mm, mm, thank you, baby girl. Hey, Ari. How you doing? Mm. So, uh, they came in. They took the, you know, they took our temple apart, stole everything from us, took our people, led us into captivity up in Babylon. Um, and all the while, the nations that was around us, you remember, they helped us at one time, right? You had Ammon, you had Edom, you had uh, Syria. You had all these different, uh, you had Moab, all these different nations that surrounded us. They helped at different times, helped try to take us down to help try to destroy us. So now we getting taken out um, and we read the book of Lamentations, if y'all remember, right? A book of Lamentations where uh, you remember you, you uh, lament means to like mourn or to cry or to complain about something, right? So we read a book about us complaining about us being taken away. Uh, read a couple chapters of that book, rather. Um, what else did we do? I think we read, what did we read? Ezekiel? You remember? What, we, what else did we read? We, uh, read Ezekiel and Lamentations. Yeah, so we read, I think we read a little bit of Ezekiel. What was it, Ezekiel 33? Yeah, and then how, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't gonna be mute no more. And how, uh, the man came to tell him that Jerusalem is fallen. And, uh, God was talking about how, uh, they, they go up to him. They hear his words, but they ain't going to do it. They ain't going to do none of it, right? They ain't going to do none of his word. So let's um let's pick up in Lamentations. Give me Lamentations chapter 4. Give me uh verse 1. This is Lamentations chapter 4, verse 1. Where my boys at? Get y'all butts in here and sit down. What they thought they were going to come in here and play? What's wrong with them? Huh? Mm -mm. Come, come in here and sit down. Well, tell my boys to come in here and sit down. Yeah, if it's glitching real bad on the live stream on YouTube, y'all, see if y'all can switch to Twitter. On Twitter, it is it's Bro Fillmore. Um or Facebook. I don't know if it'll glitch on those two, but if it is, I probably won't be able to see a comment on here. But um either way, I'll upload everything in the morning. How is the gold dim? Mm -hmm. How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. This is right. Lamentation chapter chapter four, verse what two? One. Oh, we're on two now. Okay. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers? The work. Right. He said, "Look, he said, the people of of, of our people, man, we like precious gold." How are we all be down? Like what? Are they teamed as earthen pitchers? The work mm -hmm. of man with the potter. Yeah. Even the sea monsters draw not the beast, draw out the beast, 
They give suck to their young ones. The daughter of my people has become cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst. The young children ask bread, and no man breaks it unto them. They did eat, they did feed delicate delicately, delicate delicate. Okay, they did feed delicately are desolate. Give me some water. They that did feed delicately are desolate in the streets. Man, that's crazy. They that were brought up in scarlet embrace dung hills. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom that was overthrown as in a moment and no hand stayed on her. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They are more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaves to their bones. It is withered. It becomes like a stick. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. The hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. The Lord has accomplished his fury. He has poured out his fierce anger and has kindled a fire in Zion and has devoured the foundations thereof. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitations of the world would not have be believed that the adversary and the enemy should have entered into the gates of Jerusalem. Right. So he's looking at it like would nobody believe that the most high God would let these nasty Gentiles walk into his land with his people and destroy his temple. He, they, they, we looking at it in disbelief. Like, I cannot believe that we really got kicked out of our land. And this is where we are right now. Right. Keep going. For the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests that have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her. They have wandered as blind men in the streets. They have polluted themselves with blood so that men could not touch their garments. They cried unto them, depart ye, it is unclean. Depart, depart, touch not when they fled away and wandered. They said among the heathen, they shall no more sojourn there. The anger of Yahuwah has divided them. He will no more regard them. They respected not the persons of the priests. They favored not the elders. As for us, our eyes are yet failed for our vain help and our watching. We have watched for a nation that could not save us. They hunt mm -hmm. our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled for our end is come. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles, eagles of heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of Yahuwah, was taken in their pits, of whom he said, under his shadow, we shall live among the heathen. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwell in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. The punishment right. So he said, O daughter of who? O daughter of Edom. Right? He said, O daughter of Edom. We mad at Edom. Right. Let me show y'all why. This is uh, this is uh, do, 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 do. this is give me Psalm seventy nine verse one. Psalm seventy nine verse one. Right. Our people right now are upset at Edom, and there's a reason for it. We don't have to grab it, but uh, the um, if you go all the way to um, Deuteronomy, I think it's Deuteronomy chapter 23, uh, it'll tell you that Edom is our brother. We were commanded, don't abhor. In other words, don't hate Edom because he is our brother, right? This is the whole nation of people, but this nation of people is like a brother nation to us. You know what I'm saying? We almost like you know what I'm saying? We related. So it's like, do not hate this nation of people because they are our brother. You know what I'm saying? And uh, when you have a commandment like that and your mindset is, I need to make sure that I'm looking after these people, you would expect the same thing that they'll do for you. Right? But that's not how it turned out. Right? This is, uh, this is Psalm 79 verse 1. 
O God, the heathen are coming to the thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid mm-hmm. Jerusalem on heaps. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to the meat unto the fowls of heaven. The flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. We are mm-hmm. become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are round about us. How long, Yahuwah, will thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. Mm-hmm. O oh, remember not against us former iniquities. Let thy tender mercy speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O God, of our salvation for the glory of thy name, and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sakes. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by the revenging of the blood of thy servants which which is shed. Let the sight, let the sighing of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those that are appointed to die. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom, into their bosom, their reproach wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. So we, thy people and sheep of thy pasture, will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. All right. Give me um, this is uh, uh, Psalm chapter 137, verse 1. All right. So you can see. Even there, you know what I'm saying? We look at and it's people around us that's just watching us get destroyed. That's what that psalm is kind of talking about, right? Now watch what Psalm 1, 137 say. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Look, he said, by the rivers of Babylon, that's where we sat down. Because remember, they taken us, right? And we got to walk from where we at in Jerusalem. We got to walk all the way to Babylon. That's a far walk, right? So we finally get there, and we by the rivers of Babylon, right? Watch what happened. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst of thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. Listen, the Babylonians, the ones that took us captive, they walking us through. We hang in our harps because we got stuff in our hand. We hang our harps like, who I'm tired. And they look at us like, play one of them songs. Go ahead, sing a song. The book say, they required of us a song. They take us as servants and slaves and then require us to sing for them. Right. Keep going. And they that wasted us required of us myrrh saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Right. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Sing us one of the songs y'all be singing over there. Right. But watch what we say. How shall we sing Yahuwah's song in a strange land? Right. We got these people that took our temple. They they led us away. How are we going to sing his song and we in a stranger's land? I just want y'all to see how depressed we were, how sad we were about all this stuff happening. Right? You remember Ezekiel. Ezekiel put us in a position. He told us, he said, listen, Most High God took my wife from me. And he told me I couldn't even mourn her. I had to tie up my stuff and I had to keep moving. This is what he was talking about, right? Although we lost our temple, which was akin to how Ezekiel felt about his wife, we had to just keep moving. And now we got people that's telling us, sing us one of them songs that y'all sing, which are happy songs, but it's like we're distraught right now. This is what Ezekiel was talking about. We are not going to get a chance to sit here and mourn and think about what's going on. We got to keep moving. We got to make it to uh, Babylon. You see, we tried to hang our harps on the tree, on the willow, right? We tried to take a little rest, hang our harps on the tree. They look like, well, why are you resting? Sing me a song. You know, one of them little happy songs y'all be singing in Zion. It's like you do realize y'all just destroyed our whole temple and we about to go 
you know, forget it. How are we supposed to sing a song in a strange land? All right, keep going. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Mm -hmm. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth, if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Mm -hmm. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, Look, raise it. Raise rem it. Remember, O Yahuwah, right? The children of who? Edom. So Now think about this. Our law tells us Edom is your brother. Do not hate him. That's what Yah command us. We cannot hate Edom. That's a command law. Right? And then the Most High God turn around and watch he take us down. He punish us for our sins, right? And watch what Edom do while we getting punished, while these Gentiles is beating us up, killing our people, killing our moms and our dads and our kids, everybody dying, taking us captive, our whole temple is being destroyed, stuff being set on fire. Watch what eat them. The, the people that God told us, that's your brother. Don't hate them. Watch what they do. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, raise it, raise it. Even to the You know what raise it means? Era. When they say raise it, raise it, you know what that means, Cam? What that means when they say raise it, raise it? Or race it, race it. Hmm? Y'all know what that means? Destroy it. When they say raise it, set that thing on fire. All right, that's old English. That's what they say. They say, raise it, raise it, raise it. And it's not like raise it, like lift it up. No, 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 no. That means set that thing on fire, destroy it, burn it up. Because that's what they was doing. Usually raise it, you're talking about burning something. That's what they're doing. They lit, our, they lit our land on fire. They burned everything up. They just sitting there, raise it. Yeah, they cheering them on. They watching the Babylonians take us. This is the same people that we supposed to be like brothers to them, right? They watch the Babylonians take us. And then set our whole thing on fire and they cheering it on, clapping. Right? That stuck with One us second, as bro. Hebrews. Huh? One second. All right. That stuck with us as Hebrews. Right? The Israelites look at that and we look at that like, what? This is the most tragic and traumatic event that's happened in our entire history. Right? We got our land and it's being taken away from us. We never. It's against our law to have Gentiles come in. Most our God told us if a Gentile come in, they're going to drop darn dead. But these Gentiles walked straight into the temple, destroyed it, set the whole thing on fire, set all the land on fire, got rid of everything, killed a whole bunch of us, gaffled us up, put us in chains, put hooks on us, and led us away. Then had the nerve to tell us, sing a song for us. Our people are beat up, we sick, we sad, we mad, and we're helpless. We don't feel like we can do anything. But remember what led up to all this, us rebelling, right? The Most High God sending his prophets, we reject them. Prophet after prophet, we reject them, right? He trying to get this thing, make it clear to us, we reject it. And now we see, oh, it's real, right? Keep going. Are you back yet? Still ain't back now. I got to try to fill some time. So y'all hear about the joke that one time. Uh, what the two? What I'm saying? All right. Here you go. What's your question? Let's see. What does this have to do with the Bible? Goodness gracious. What's wrong with him? Boy, got darn issues, right? If you look back at what we read last week, right, we had Ezekiel and Ezekiel was telling us, remember, Ezekiel couldn't speak at all. Right. The first thing when the most high God popped up with it to Ezekiel on Ezekiel, it was Ezekiel chapter three. I think it was most high God. One of the first things he did is he took away his ability to speak. Right. So he said, you're going to be mute. The only time that Ezekiel could speak is when the Most High God gave him a word. So imagine this guy being mute the whole time, right? In other words, not being able to speak. He can hear, he can do everything. He interact, he's a regular person. Same person he always been his whole life, right? But now, just can't say nothing, right? Then all of a sudden, the temple is destroyed. Somebody tell him that he gets his speech back, right? And remember, the book told us 
that the people were going to sit in front of Ezekiel as if, you know what I'm saying, like as if they the people and if they the people of God, stop boy, put it down. As if they the people of God and if they really paying attention, as if they really care. But he told Ezekiel something last week. He told him, he said, you're like somebody who sings a song to them. Right. In other words, you're entertaining to them. They're not coming to you because they're listening to the word. Right. They're not coming to you because they're going to obey what you're talking about. They come to you because it's like, you know what? I like listening to him. Like, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's just entertaining. It's fun. Right. His voice sounds nice. So he's saying that they there for the wrong reason, right? Now, at the same time that that's happening, our people are getting drugged out of Jerusalem into Babylon, being made to sing a song for entertainment. You see how the Most High God turn it around on people, right? We thinking, we walking up to, to Ezekiel, like, oh, yeah, man, you entertaining. Let me just sit here. Ezekiel passionately telling us the word of the Most High God. It's the word, it's the word, this word, trying to get us to listen. We sitting there like, oh. That sounds like a sweet melody. You know what I'm saying? Not melody. You know what I'm saying? But that sounds like a sweet song, right? We ain't listening. We ain't, ain't no band a word, right? Then all of a sudden, another group of our people getting pulled out. And while we in our, our sad state mourning, the Gentiles look at us and say, sing a song for us. That's how quick the most, most I got to turn this stuff around. Y'all treated him like he was singing a song when he trying to get y'all to obey the most I got. Okay, cool. Since y'all didn't obey the most I got, when y'all sad and y'all depressed, I'm going to make them who, who, who now are over you, right? They masters to you. They can beat you on your darn back when you don't listen. Now they're going to look at you and say, sing a song for us or else I'm going to whoop your darn butt. Now we got hard decisions to make. It's real tough, right? That's the, uh, that was the end of Psalms. You disappeared again? And buy good help around here, boy. I'm telling you, she's like, please, <laughs> what is going on? What? No. D, man, what's up? Yeah, you know, I got to put my boy up here now. I don't, I don't know what's going on with the boy. It's all types of technical. They said the stream, stream was all bad. I don't know what's going on. I don't think none of them is able to watch online. They check Twitter for me. They check Facebook and they checked uh they checked uh YouTube. That's a big hate. <laughs> you read like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my bad yeah i don't know what's going on bro that thing <laughs> we trying to run a show here goodness gracious well you know being a full-time dad you know what i'm saying like i don't get no breaks you know, okay I don't get no time off you know what i mean you got two and a half kids you wouldn't understand i don't know what he got going on only left for like five minutes <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, giving us the filler. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you got me out here looking crazy. <laughs> like, well, uh, I'm sure you'll be back in a second. Uh, I hear about the one where two guys walk into a bar and you know <laughs> one's Mexican and the other's black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. oh, uh like grab uh grab uh grab Obadiah chapter one. Is Obadiah verse one? Is Obadiah verse one? Ain't Obadiah like one page? Yeah. Yeah. One chapter. What? 
still be with the little process. Like it's somewhere by like Jonah and uh, somewhere by yeah, Jonah. Was... It might be before Jonah. I thought it was near Nahum. There we go. It yeah. is near Nahum, but I, I think Obadiah. it's before scary. Nahum. Huh? I said, I said, when's the last time I read Obadiah? That's crazy. All right, we got it's it. Obadiah verse 1. The vision of Obadiah. Thus says Yahuwah God concerning Edom. We right, so now this is the prophet Obadiah who was sent to Edom. Now, we have the context, right? We know we was taking out our land. We know we was super sad about it. We know that the Edomites were looking on at us why it was happening, and they were saying, raise it, raise it. In other words, they cheering it on, right? So now watch how the Most High God sends a prophecy to Obadiah. I mean, uh, he's, he gives Obadiah a prophecy to send to the Edomites. So this is a prophet. His name is Obadiah. He walks to Edom, and he starts talking to the people of Edom, and starts yelling at them, telling them all these things that we're about to read. Watch this. The vision of Obadiah, thus says Yahuwah concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. Thou hast dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation mm -hmm. is high. <clears throat> that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou he said, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, what else? And thou, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, mm -hmm. thence will I bring thee down, says Yahuwah. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they have enough? If the great right, listen, <laughs> you gotta. You got to look at the Most High God, look at it. Most High God is saying, listen, if you was being robbed by a thief, right? Wouldn't he steal until he had enough? Like a thief. If a thief, somebody break into my house, right? Are they going to take literally everything of my house? Or are they just going to take until they got enough that they can carry and then run out? Yeah, like they ain't about to sit here and be like, all right, get the couch. Got to, you know what I'm saying? Get the U-Haul outside, move the U-Haul, get everything out. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got, they, they ain't got time to take everything. They just going to take until they have enough. Be like, okay, grab that, grab that, grab that. Go, 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 and run out. They get their hand for and go out. So the Most High God said, if you were robbed by a thief, they'd probably just take until they have enough, right? Watch what he say next. If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? Right? He said, listen, <clears throat> if it's grape, if it's a, a field full of grapes, right? And I'm a great gatherer. Ain't I'm going to leave some grape behind? That's unreasonable to say I'm going to grab every single grape out of the darn field. That's crazy. Right? I don't know. Most like God said, oh, this is different. He said, now, usually somebody steal from you. They just going to steal until they get enough. You got a grape gallon. They're going to leave some grapes behind. Oh, but not you, eat them. I'm going to kill every last one of y'all that was the most high god that's the point he's trying to make he said generally somebody steal from you they gonna take what they can get and move but not with you eat them it's about to be different this ain't a normal situation keep going watch this how are the things of esau searched out how are his how are his head things sought up <clears throat> right keep going all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none mm -hmm. understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, saith Yahuwah, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount, every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee and thou shalt be cut off forever. In mm -hmm. the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the stranger in the day that thou did what stood on the other side, when you stood on the other side, in other words, when we were getting beat up and tore up by these people, when you were standing on the other side, what did they do? In the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lot upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them. 
right? He said, even when they came and did this, you was just like one of them. You was on their team. You was on their side. We got a law telling us we can't hate you because you are a brother. Nevertheless, when it came time for us to get toe up, you was just like one of our enemies. You just stood there. Right? Keep going. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither he said, neither should, you shouldn't have looked over it, and neither should it have made you happy. Right? Keep going. Neither going should on? thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou uh -huh. should not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou should not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither should thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither should thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return on thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon thy holy mount, my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea. They shall drink and they shall and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness in the house of Jacob and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord has spoken it. And they of the south shall possess. He said, how many going to be remaining? And they shall kindle in them and devour them. There shall not be any remaining in the house of Esau, for the Lord has he, spoken it. He said, when the Most High God get done with y'all, there will be no one left in the house of Esau. Because Yahuwah has spoken it. That's why he asked him in the beginning. He said, did somebody steal from you? It's a thief. Won't they just take what they can? You know what I'm saying? Won't they take it till they got enough? You know what I'm saying? And if it's, a, if it's somebody who gathers grapes, Ain't they going to leave at least some grapes behind? He said, in the day that I deal with Esau, none will remain. None of y'all going to be. Right? So it's a lot of people that try to figure out, they looking like, who is Esau? Right? And when we think about our captivity, right, because we see that this is one of the strongest judgments of the book on a, on a group of people, is one of the struggle. I'm going to leave no one. So when we think about our plight as people and we start to realize when we start to learn like, oh, we're descendants of the ancient Israelites, like these people that we read about. Oh, that's our ancestors. Right. And then we think about our history and we'd be like, oh, but these white folks had us in the slave trade. Right. One of the things that some of the people did is they said, hmm, let's make white people Edomites. And they use that to justify the hate. So they think, a lot of them think, and they teach people that when we're reading about this, that it's talking about white folks. It's not talking about white folks, right? It's talking about the ancient Edomites, right? It's talking about the ancient Edomites. And who are the ancient Edomites? Who, do, who knows today, right? We don't really know, right? But it's probably black folk that look just like us, right? That's over there in, you know what I'm saying, Saudi Arabia and Yemen and all those different areas in the deserts. You know what I'm saying? That they get treated just like us. Get marginalized to the side. You can't do nothing with them. All right? A lot of them are probably Edomites. One day, the Most High God going to finish them off. Get rid of all of them. All right? We going to possess their land. That is how the prophecy works from the Most High God. Is that the end of the chapter? No. <clears throat> Keep going. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain of the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath, and of the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Seraphat and Sepharad, Sephir shall possess the cities of the south. And mm -hmm. saviors shall come up out of Zion to come up on Mount Zion to judge the mountain of Esau and the kingdom shall be Yahuwah's. The kingdom shall be Yahuwah's, right? So that's talking about at the very end. You know what 
Yahushua come back, right? That's when the kingdom becomes Yahuwah's, right? So it's important so for us to understand this piece of our history, right? Why we had such a tumultuous relationship with uh, Edomites, right? It was tough for us to watch them, you know what I'm saying? Watch them just watch us get destroyed. That was something that stuck with us. It was hard for us, right? That, that's something that you'll see that when we get into the New Testament, you'll see the people's attitude against some of these uh, rulers are because some of these rulers actually were real Edomites, not the white folks. Like they was the real Edomites. Um, we'll kind of talk about it when we get the Gospels. Kind of, it'll, it'll look a little more clear when we get there. Let's um, let's go back to Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel chapter thirty-four, verse one. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1. Ezekiel got his voice back now, so he can talk. You know what I'm saying? He feeling like he had full strength. So we're going um, we to see how kind of after he gets his, his, his ability to speak back, we're going to see how, uh, how things kind of play out from here and how his prophecy goes from here. It's Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1. You on mute? Yeah, I got it. All right. Let's do it. And the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus says Yahuwah God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not what does it mean by when he says shepherds of Israel? I want y'all to get the, the imagery. What, when he says shepherds of Israel, cut it out, boys. When he says shepherds of Israel, what is he talking about? The leaders. Priests. The leaders, right? That's when you say a shepherd, what does a shepherd do? The priests the leaders. You know what a shepherd is? What is a shepherd? Hunts. Wrong. You know what a shepherd is? You know what a shepherd is? German shepherd, yeah. <laughs> you know what a shepherd is? But no, wrong. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> of what? What kind of animals? Eat, right? So a shepherd is somebody who takes care of sheep or, or, or rams or lambs and all that, right? Take care of the herd, right? Goats, right? So you would have you have all of your sheep or your, your goats and your rams and your lambs and all that, right? And you had a shepherd. Usually, you know what I'm saying? You imagine a shepherd with a, with a staff in his hand, right? And then you'll guide them and tell them to kind of go in a certain area. And then you'll walk through and you'll lead them to water. You know what I'm saying? You give them water, and then you lead them to a grass field, and you let them eat, and they all eat, and you know what I'm saying? You do all that stuff, and then they eating and everything, and then you just kind of stand and you watch them. But wherever you go, a shepherd naturally, I mean, uh, a sheep naturally will look, and then they'll follow whatever's in front of them. So you get one sheep, and it follows you, and naturally the other sheep is going to follow the next sheep, and so now you just got a line of sheep following you. And that's the job of a shepherd because a shepherd is going to be tall and they got the staff in their hand. It gets the sheep attention and the sheep follows them. Right. And they go everywhere and they get to know each other a little bit. And now they attach to this shepherd because the shepherd takes care of them and all that. So wherever he go, they go. You know what I'm saying? He go this way. They go this way. That's a shepherd. So the imagery that the most high God is using for us is he's saying there are leaders of Israel who the people look to. They look to this leader. And they say, wherever he go, I go. Because I trust that he's teaching me about the most high God. I'm trusting that he's leading me in the right place. Right? So he said, now we have a warning to the shepherds. Because the shepherds are doing what? Let's read it again. <sighs> Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. We, not... the, the shepherd feed himself. Right? But what else? Should not the shepherds feed the flock? If the flock didn't eat, how the shepherds going to eat? He said, your job is to feed the flock. When he say flock, he's talking about all of the group of sheep. So you got all these sheep that haven't eaten. 
you got grain though. You know what I'm saying? Like when you think of grain, think of like uh think of like uh policies. Sunflower seeds. Policies. Come on. I'm from the land. I don't know what y'all sunflower seeds. Okay, so you got sunflower seeds. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you, you pop it. a sunflower seed in your mouth and you crack it and you go. What'd you call it? Policy. What are you, 80? I've never heard that term. What's wrong with this dude? That's because that's because your daddy from, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Where your daddy from? They call policies. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what y'all talk about out here. But anyway. Policies or sunflower seeds. Sunflower as, seeds. As as y'all might see. You know what I'm saying? You you bite into it, right? And then you get that little thing out of it. That's kind of like what a grain is, right? It's something that you can just eat. You know what I'm saying? You so but the the animals eat that too. So imagine having all this grain that you could just eat. It ain't kind of like rice, because you wouldn't really kind of eat rice straight out the pack. You eat rice straight out the pack? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like rice, you you ain't gonna you just ain't gonna eat it. You're gonna cook some rice first. But grain is like rice is grain, but it's some grain that you could just, you know what I'm saying, just pick it out, just eat it right off of the plant. It won't, you know, I'm just eat it. And that's kind of how sunflower seeds are. That's kind of how sunflower seeds are. You know what I'm saying? You crack them thing and then you just eat it. So imagine having a bunch of cracked, like the sunflower seeds and the seed out of the sunflower has already been cracked. You just got a bunch of all you gotta do is pick. You know how you can buy them from 7 Eleven? And you ain't, you ain't got to crack them yourself. They already cracked for you and it's already open. Imagine having a whole bunch of them. Whatever they call. A whole bunch of them, right? And your whole flock eat those too. Like that's their food too. And instead of feeding them, you're in there eating in front. They look to you though. Wherever you go, they go. They look to you and you eating. They don't even know that you... They don't even know good enough to know that you're supposed to be feeding them. All they know is, oh, he's taking care of me. But you eating right in front of them. Um, um, and they don't even know that that's bad. Right? Most High God said, woe to you. When he say woe, whenever you see the book say woe, that means destruction to you. Destruction to the shepherds. Right? To the leaders of Israel that feed themselves, but they not feeding us. People that read the word for themselves and learn the truth. And then teach the people lies. They'll do all this research and manipulate the people. You know, a lot of the pastors, you go to these churches, you know what they'll say? They'll say, listen, and they, they told me and Tita to our face, right? They'll say, listen, of course we know that you can go deeper into the Bible than some of the basic topics that we cover every Sunday in church. But you think people going to sit around and listen to this stuff? We got to keep people coming. So we cover race, love, right? We cover forgiveness. They cover about five or six topics and just rotate them things, right? Put a little spin on it each time and rotate them things. They don't teach you nothing from the Bible. They just teach you a couple topics that's, that's easy for them to preach. And the reason is because they know that some people will be challenged. If people get to talking like me, Guess how many people are gonna come to church? How many people here? That's about it. You think these big old mega churches, you think with well, one, most of y'all kids ain't even got no darn money. The only person in here that got some money is my wife, and that's my money. <laughs> oh, excuse me. You know what I mean? So it's like, how I'm supposed to pay for my mega church and get my little steeple at the top and get my little glass? You know what I'm saying? You know what they call it? Uh, what's it called? Stained glass? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? How I'm supposed to get my little stained glass with the little Virgin Mary on it? You know what I'm saying? That stuff costs money. I, somebody got to pay for that. So they say, oh, I can't, be, I can't be teaching the way that, you know what I'm saying, Brother Phil teach. That don't make no darn sense. We can't get no money like that. Billy, if you Billy, actually Billy, teaching the people, you can't Billy get no Graham money say, like that. Huh? Because of what Billy Graham say? <laughs> he said, he said, I leave, Billy Graham, a bad boy. He said, he said, I'll leave it to other people to teach. About the severity of God. I only want to teach about the goodness of God. And the love of God. Like that must be nice. If it's a whole book that you got to teach. It must be nice to teach the thing that everybody going to accept. And everybody going. You know what I'm saying. Ain't going 
ain't going to scare nobody off. But what about the other side of God? The side of God where he's going to judge you. Where your butt going to burn forever if you don't listen to him. You don't want to teach that part? That's the part that the people need. But that's how it goes. These people are liars. So that's an example, that's a real life example of the shepherd eating but not feeding the people. I can tell you, I can tell you this. I bet you Billy Graham knew. He knew well enough to know what he didn't want to teach. So that means he went out, he learned the truth, right? Or at least a portion of the truth. And he decided not to feed his flock that truth that he learned. So he ate, but he didn't feed the flock. Right? When you look at that, that is abhorrent to God. When I say abhorrent, that means that is hated by God. Right? When you decide to take on a position as a leader, right, a leader of people, you have to sacrifice. Right? You have to take it on the chin. You have to set it to the side and give what you got to the people. You feed the people. Right? That's why if the people say, hey, I need to be on the call with you. I'm going through some stuff. Guess what? What you got going on? Right? Hey, I need to understand this. But I need to understand the Bible. I got some questions. Give me one second. Okay, what you got going on? Right? If we got to do two, three Bible studies a week, guess what? Let's do them. Two, three Bible studies a week. Whatever it takes to feed the people, the people got to eat. Right? And when I'm talking about feeding them right now, I'm talking about the word of the Most High God. Let's see. Keep going. <clears throat> you eat the fat and you clothe ye with the wool. You kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. Right? He said, you ruled them with force and with cruelty. Right? A lot of these, I just watched a, uh, a video that popped up on my thing today. You know what I'm saying? And it was this, I don't know if he is a pastor, if he is a praise to, but he was yelling at his little congregation. His congregation looked as about as empty as ours. You know what I'm saying? But that boy, he got up there and he was yelling at it. He was like, I'm tired of this. Every time I get up here, I'm praising, I'm worshiping, and I'm just looking at y'all dry faces. He said, I can't stand. Y'all don't give me nothing. Y'all don't bring nothing to the table. I come here every Sunday and this, that, and other, and I don't get paid for this, and this, that, and other, da, da, da. And he just going off on these people. And I'm sitting there like, this man is going crazy. And guess what? Wasn't none of it about obeying y'all's word. Wasn't none of it about learning y'all's word. All of it was about what he calls praise and worship, singing. He mad because when he's singing, the people ain't clapping loud enough. He talking about y'all not giving them nothing back. He said, I welcome any of y'all, any one of y'all want to get up here and praise and worship, I welcome y'all, but y'all ain't going to do it. I look like this man crazy. Y'all should find that. I'm going a, I'm to a find the video and put it in the band, uh, band now so y'all can see it. I definitely was rolling it more. At first, I thought it was a joke. I was like, oh, this man is dead serious. I think it was crazy. But that's how it is. Sometimes they rule with force, right? They rule with force and cruelty. These people ain't sacrificing. They ain't taking no losses for y'all. That's all right. When you don't take no loss, guess what? You're going to lose it all. Keep going. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. And none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of Yahuwah. As I live, says Yahuwah God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds stretch for search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of Yahuwah. Thus says Yahuwah God, behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more. For I will deliver my, fro my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. 
For thus says Yahuwah God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in and in the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold and in a, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, says Yahuwah God. I, I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away and bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick but i will destroy the but i will destroy the fat and the strong and i will feed them with judgment as for you O my flock thus says you who are god behold i judge between cattle and cattle between the rams and the goats seemeth mm -hmm. it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture but ye tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures and to have drunk all the deep waters, but you must foul the residue with your feet. As for my flock, they eat that. Listen to what he's saying, though. No, hey, look, he said, does this seem small to you? When you say pasture, right? Pasture is talking about grass, right? So he's saying, does this seem small to you that after you eat up all the good grass, you take what's left and just walk all over it? Like, you ate all the good stuff. It's at least some, like, yeah, all right, grass left. But instead of letting the sheep eat that, then you walk and stomp all over that and muddy it all up. You got some good water. You drink up most of the good water. You got a little water left, but then now you kicking around mud and all of the little water that left. So now it ain't even drinkable no more. Right? He's saying, does that seem like a small thing to you? But that's what it's like when these pastors do this, when the pastors and the spiritual leaders and the camp leaders and the bishops and the people who call themselves prophets and the people who call themselves apostles, all these people that claim to be leaders of the Most High God. That's what it's like when they feed y'all lies, when they got y'all believing and really, really actually looking at stuff like, oh, you know what? This is real. You know what I'm saying? This is real. We got to keep the law to be saved. Gentiles not going to get in. Right? Uh, what else? What other foolishness they be darn teaching? You know what I'm saying? You should call this man the Pope. And that means father. God loves everybody. No matter what you do, just believe. Right? All these weird doctrines that they teach, what they've done is they've gotten good, valid books. And then they've taken that, drank it, and whatever was left, they gave you the muddy version, the tainted version. They got you celebrating Christmas. They've, they've ingrained Christmas in y'all lives so much that you feel like you've done wrong to people by saying you don't want to celebrate it. They got you feeling like, like you really don't want to celebrate it no more. You're like, man, I didn't learn the truth. You don't even want to celebrate it no more, but guess what? These people look at you and be like, you don't celebrate Christmas? Why not? You'd be like, oh, well, you know, it's not a big deal. You nervous to tell them that, oh, I think this stuff is stupid. You'd be like, oh, well, no, either way, you know, I just like, you know, I just like to be around, you know, my loved ones at Christmas time. Like, no, this stuff is stupid. It's okay to say it, right? But the pressure around the stops, and that's what has people messed up. Because everybody is drunk from the tainted waters and, and ate from the tainted pasture. So now we all poisoned, right? We're all sick, malnourished, right? And that's what we got to try to sort our way through. That's what the shepherd is supposed to help us short, sort through. The shepherd is supposed to say, no, 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 no. You ain't got to drink from that, that water. And you ain't got to eat from that pasture. Follow me. I take you to where the real drink is and where the real food is, right? That way, when you eat and you drink, you'll be full and you'll be healthy and you'll be nourished. Right? But not us. Not us. We've been led by a hypocrite. Right? False prophet. False apostle. What you got, boy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
at school. So at your school, you saying that when it comes to Christmas, they say it's okay. It's okay why you don't. It's okay that you don't celebrate it, right? That part's fine. But they say, please don't share why you don't celebrate it. They don't want to know why you don't celebrate. It. Just don't celebrate it. And they don't want you to tell people that Santa's not real. Why is that? <clears throat> why do you think they don't want you to tell people that Santa's not real? And they, why do you think they don't want you to share with people why you don't celebrate Christmas? Why is that? What do you think? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Other people got different beliefs. But why you can't, why everybody can't share their belief? If I believe something and that's what I believe, and you believe something else, why we both can't exchange, be like, hey, this is what I believe. And you say, hey, that's what I believe. Why do you think that? Look, if you believe Christmas is real and Santa is real, and I believe he don't, why is it okay that you get to say, hey, Christmas is real, Santa is real? Nobody tell you don't say that. But I can't say, nah, Christmas is not real and Santa is not real. Both of them are, that's your belief and this is my belief. Why you get to share your belief and I don't get to share mine? Why, why y'all think that is? Because one of them is true. One of them is effective. One of them will change the darn world. The other one's a joke and everybody knows it. And instead of teaching people the truth, you suppress the truth. Right? The teacher knows Santa, Santa ain't real. Every teacher knows Santa ain't real. It ain't a teacher alive that believes Santa is real. They all know he ain't real. Right? But guess what? Instead of letting that be known, they'd rather suppress the truth and teach the people a lie. That's every pastor. You ever go to a darn church, they got a Christmas tree up, they doing the same thing the teacher do. If you ever go to a church and they, in a little bit, a bunch of these churches next month, in a month or two, next bunch of these churches, you know what they about to be doing? Oh, they about to have the egg. See what I'm talking about? They about to have the egg. They, they, they smart now. They going to call it Resurrection Sunday. But guess what's going to be in the back right after the sermon is done? The egg, bunch of stinky boiled eggs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then they gonna have the darn uh plastic eggs with a bunch of the candy in it, and it's gonna be tucked off and hit, and all the kids gonna be like, Oh, I can't wait to the Easter egg hunt. Every pastor that allow that foolishness at their congregation, they are full of sin. Right? Because you stand in the way of the truth and you give the people the muddy water. You give the people the trampled over grass. It's good grass right at your fingertips, right in your hand in that book. And you put that to the side and give them the muddy water and the step, the trampled over grass. That's nasty. Most like God said, we're not doing that. Is that is something in that cup? Most like God said, we're not doing that no more. One day, most like God said, I'm going to come get my sheep, my darn self. Right? And all these pastors going to have to pay. Right? All the shepherds going to have to pay for it. Watch this. Keep going. As for my flock, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. Therefore, thus says you who are God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle, because you have thrust with, si you have thrust with side and with shoulder, and pushed all the disease with your horns till ye have scattered them abroad. Mm -hmm. Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle, and I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, Yahuwah, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, Yahuwah, have spoken it. <laughs> when he say my servant David, he talking about the Messiah. Right, so he's talking about the Messiah gonna be the one that rule over us, and he said he's gonna feed us. Right, next week we gonna we gonna get back into the book of Daniel. We gonna kind of go through some of Daniel because uh, 
is 70 years that we about to read about that we are in captivity, right? So Ezekiel continues to be in captivity. It's a little bit more of Ezekiel we have to get through. And then we also have um, Daniel. Um, and then after that, we get into some of the other prophets, right? We're going to get into... Uh, um, what's uh that uh Haggai Haggai uh, Zechariah Malachi and Zechariah um right you got the book Haggai of and Zechariah and we gonna see you know what I'm saying some of the prophecy that they have then we gonna deal with Esther after that right we're gonna deal with the book of Esther after that and then we gonna uh then we gonna wrap well I don't know what order is it is it Esther first I think Esther is first. Yeah, so we might deal with Esther before we get into the prophets. Actually. Yeah, and Nehemiah and Ezra is like the same time. Yeah. Any questions? Well, congratulations, though. This is like the end of like the history portion of the books. Well, well, yeah, this this portion of the history. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like the history act one. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And you got a short act two, and you get into the gospel. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No, no questions, no question, no question, no question. All right, well, let's pray out.